Welcome to Lab 7, Trophic Interactions. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lab practical is coming up. We will be sending out an email with relevant information regarding your lab practical. Study material is posted in a folder on Canvas called Lab Practical Help. For this week, we have a variety of organisms in this lab. Here's a brief overview of them. These are mosquito larvae of the genus Culex. They eat single-celled algae and are prey for many different animals. They breathe using the siphon tube on their butt. Gambusia are a popular biological control agent used to manage mosquitoes. These fish reproduce at a high rate, which makes them an effective control against mosquitoes. This will be our main predator for the lab. These fishes are African cichlids. They feed on fish, crustaceans, worms, and small insects. For our purposes, they will function as a top predator in this lab. If we organize the fish and mosquitoes into a trophic cascade, it would look like this. In this diagram, do you know what the primary producer is? What about the primary consumer and secondary consumer? You learned about carnivores and herbivores in lab 2. What trophic levels would they belong? Our main question this week is, does the presence of a predator change prey behavior? To do this, we will be studying the time budgets of larval mosquitoes. A time budget is a record of how an animal spends its time. In this case, we will be watching mosquito larvae in the presence and absence of predators, and seeing if mosquito behavior changes in the presence of a predator. You'll be watching mosquito larvae in four experimental treatments. Each tank will contain five mosquito larvae. Treatment 1. Gambusia absent. The mosquitoes are alone in this treatment. Treatment 2. Gambusia present behind a glass partition. Treatment 3. Gambusia present, no partition. Treatment 4. Cichlid and Gambusia present, no partition. To measure our time budgets, we will be using the instantaneous scan method. You will need to keep track of all the mosquitoes at 30 second intervals for a full 5 minutes. You only need to record what the mosquito larvae are doing at each 30 second mark. There are four possible larvae behaviors and we will show you each. 1. Feeding. Mosquito larvae will slowly be moving along the bottom of the tank as they graze on microalgae. 2. Hiding. The larvae will be using the plant as cover. 3. Breathing. The larvae are angled downwards with their siphons at the surface. 4. Swimming. This is self-explanatory. In addition, we want you to record if a mosquito does get eaten. Here's an example of the data sheet you will record on. So let's watch a little sample video so you can see what's going on. At each 30 second mark, there will be a beep, and this icon will appear in the upper left corner. So when that goes off, record what the larvae are doing. For the practice, we'll pause the video to show you what you need to record. We'll start by recording what the mosquitoes are doing initially. Looks like four larvae are breathing and one is feeding. We'll write that down and the timer starts now. Did you get three breathing and two swimming? Good. Now practice a couple more on your own.
Now that you have your practice data, we need to do some calculations. Pat will show you how to calculate an average time budget. You can also revisit this portion of the video after you have watched all four treatments. Okay, you've collected your data and now we want to convert that to time budgets. Basically, what percent time the mosquitoes were feeding, hiding, breathing, and swimming. So to do that, what I'm going to do is take the number of observations for each behavior at every time period and basically convert that to a percent. So the way I collected the data here, the initial refers to, okay, before you started the timer, okay, what were the mosquitoes doing? In this case here, all five mosquitoes were at the surface. They were breathing. That's where that all these, these five marks come from. At the first 30 second mark, I had four mosquitoes that were breathing, one that was swimming. At the one minute mark, I had three that were breathing, two that were swimming, and so on. That's where these tick marks come from. Next thing I want to do is add up all the observations. And so I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven observations for feeding. So I can put seven here. Same thing for hiding. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven observations for hiding. So I enter seven here and so on. So if I add all these together, that's 32. If I add all these together, that's nine. Then the total sum, that comes from adding all the sums together. So 7 plus 7 plus 32 plus 9 gives me 55. That'll help me convert the percents. Now what I want to do is, is figure out what percent time are they feeding, hiding, breathing, and swimming. So to do that, I take 7 for the feeding, divide that by the total number of observations. That's the total number of tick marks here. 7 divided by 55 gives me 13%. Same thing for hiding. That was 7 divided by 55, gives me 13%. For breathing, 32 divided by 55 gives me 58%, then same idea for swimming. And that's how you create the time budget. Then you're going to add that to the spreadsheet with data from other groups, and you're going to average those, then plot the averages on the graphs. Now that you know how to calculate an average time budget, we can move on to the real deal. The next video will contain the four treatments you have to collect data from. You can always revisit this video if you need help with the calculations. And as usual, if you have trouble with any of these concepts, please contact your TA.